YouTube is peppered with hacks that apparently give you quick and easy solutions to replacing cartridge bearings. But do they really work or are you just going to ruin your bike? Well, let's find out. Compression style hubs are the new norm. Also known as press fit hubs fills you with dread, doesn't it? And the bearings used are an interference fit, which is just a posh way of saying they're wedged in. But to get them out, you need specialist tools. Cartridge bearing extraction tools can cost upwards of £400 and it's a similar price to put them back in again. So it's hardly surprising that the average home mechanic is turning to alternative internet based hacks in order to remove these bearings. However, when it involves things like a hammer, the biggest screwdriver you own, and medieval torture implements, it's hardly surprising that the average home mechanic's turning around saying, do you know what, I don't think I'll bother. However, I'll happily take one for the team. So let's give it a go. Okay, so first up, bearing removal. Now some say you should remove the bearings from this hub using a device called a bearing puller, whilst others, including some pro mechanics, say it's absolutely fine and you can whack them out using a hammer and a big screwdriver. So first of all, let's take a look at that. Okay, so this, is a hunt gravel wheel and it uses a Novatech hub. Exploded view of one up there right now so you can see what we're dealing with. Now inside this hub is something called a preload tube and what that preload tube does is it sets the exact distance between the two bearings and stops you from crushing the bearings when you fit it to your bike. The problem is that preload tube is stopping you from tapping the side of the bearing. So apparently what we need to do is just nudge it out the way. So let's give that a go. Getting the preload tube and nudging it to one side. No. Let's pretend I tapped this bearing out and didn't use a puller. Now let's have a look at that preload tube and you will see there's a lot more to it. And that preload tube fits snugly inside that hub and doesn't move from side to side. So you're not nudging it to one side. So you can't just tap the bearings out of this hub with a screwdriver. It's not possible. So let's try it on a different hub. Hammer screwdriver hack attempt two, a Mavic Axiom disc hub that doesn't have a preload tube so I can get to the back of the bearing with a screwdriver and knock it out. Let's try again. Okay, there's my wheel, there's my screwdriver trusty old hammer. Well, let's knock that bearing out. Sounds lovely that, doesn't it? Now what you need to do is you need to go front to back, left to right, and you've got to work your way around because you don't want the bearing coming out at an angle. Because if it comes out at an angle, you'll damage the hub. So what you need to do, a little bit there, and then a little bit on that side. And there it is. The bearing is out of the wheel. And it doesn't look like, oh no, yes we have, we have caused damage. I'll try and get a better picture, but I've damaged the hub because it looks like, yes, I've tapped the hub with the screwdriver, which has damaged it. Good system. Unfortunately, because I was completely blind and couldn't see what I was doing, I have ever so slightly damaged the inside of the hub and chipped a little bit of it away. Right, so now we've got that out of the way, let's look at a bearing extractor. This is a blind bearing puller kit. It extracts bearings from eight to 25 millimeters. If you look at your average cartridge bearing, you will notice an inner chamfered or radii edge. What the blind bearing puller does is it goes in and beyond the bearing and hooks itself onto that edge and pulls the bearing out perfectly straight. Like the Park Tool set, it uses varying sizes of collets, but unlike the Park Tool, it uses a perfectly straight puller rather than the sliding hammer technique. And because it uses that perfectly straight puller, it is a lot more forgiving on the hub. 
The Blind Bearing Puller Kit is extremely easy to buy, costs around about £40, link in the description below. Right, let's set this up and give it a try. Okay, so how does the Blind Puller work? What you have is you have something called a collet and this sits inside the bearing and then a pin goes through and then the pin you wind the pin in only by hand you don't need to use a spanner wind it in by hand and then what will happen is the collet will expand and it will grab hold of the bearing as you can see and as you can see it sits perfectly flush on the bearing so it won't affect the preload tube so let's insert that in and draw the bearing out what we do is we slot our collet in wind in our pin and you will feel the collet grab hold of the edge of the bearing like so as I was saying earlier, you don't need to do this up with the spanners, you just do it up by hand. And now that has got a good hold of the bearing. And then all we need to do is use our puller, put our puller on top, wind it up and extract the bearing. What I've done with my one to protect the hubs, I'll put some little feet on it. So all we do, wind that on. So that is now wound on and now all we need to do is extract it. So all we need is a 14 mil spanner and a six mil allen key. Put the spanner on, put the allen key on, and then all we do is wind the spanner round, and the shaft will pull up and draw the bearing out. Nice and straight and even. And there it is, simple as that. One bearing, perfectly drawn out. So because of this design, of preload tube that we're seeing more and more than the one that Hunt is currently using, it's not possible to get behind the bearing with a screwdriver to tap them out. So you've got no choice but to pull the bearing. So that's the stress of hammering at wheels over and done with. Now let's look at the more pleasant job of replacing the bearings. And it's always the case, never refit, always replace. Never put pulled bearings back in the wheel. Right, let's crack on. The correct way to reinstall cartridge bearings is with a bearing press. However, some people choose to make their own. So I have watched every single YouTube make your own bearing press video, and in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier. This is made up of a threaded bar, some big washers, and some nuts. And that cost me a grand total of nine pounds to make. First job, get your bearing. Apply a little grease to aid inserting the bearing and to prevent any corrosion further down the line. So all we need to do is get our bearing press, insert it into our wheel, put the washer on, put the nut on and do it up and press the bearing back in. <coughs> one spanner and the other one. And let's do it up. So the immediate problem I have is the bearing is starting to go in sideways. So apparently what you need to do in this situation is loosen it a bit, tilt it and try and get it to go back in. So let's give that a go. Apparently what I need to do is loosen it, put it at an angle to apply more pressure in the area where it needs the pressure. No, it's just going back down again. It's not working. So I'm going to pause the camera and continue to fight with this to see if I can get it to go in straight. So the problem with this system, unlike a bearing press, it is not holding the bearing at a 90 degree angle to the hub. So it's just floating around. So the bearing's going to follow the point of least resistance and just 
go in at an angle. Now I've tried different size washers. I've tried square ones, small square ones, bigger round ones. I've tried getting the bar and pulling at an angle to try and apply more pressure at the point where it's, the bearing has risen. No matter what I do, the bearing follows the path of less, less resistance and just goes in at an angle. Now the problem is the bearing is made of steel and the hub is made of a soft alloy. So when it does go in at an angle, it's just going to gouge a big groove out of the bearing seat and permanently damage the hub. So every time that bearing goes in at an angle, I'm having to then get a bearing puller and pull the bearing back out. And what do they tell you? If you pull a bearing back out with a puller, you have to discard the bearing and put in a new one. So I'm having to pull the bearing back out again and then put a potentially damaged bearing back in, which is going in at an angle and then potentially damaging the hub. Now I'm sure if I persisted with this, I could eventually get this system to work. And I suspect other people have eventually got this system to work. But I also suspect there are far greater amount of people that have damaged hubs using this. So I am not going to do it. Okay, so let's have a look at a bearing press set. This delightful looking thing is a 25 piece cycling specific bearing press set. It will do everything from our hubs and bottom brackets and everything in between. Now the trouble is workshop grade press sets can cost anything up to £350. So that is why your average budding home mechanic goes for Frankenstein's nose ring. However, it doesn't need to be that way. So that lovely looking set is more than enough for your average budding home mechanic. And believe it or not, that only costs £40. Link in the description below. So, £10 for Frankenstein's nose ring or £40 for that delightful bearing press set. It's a no-brainer. Right, let's give it a try. The fundamental difference between a bearing press and old Frankenstein over there is these little things, drifts. The set contains drifts specific to bearing sizes. The 6902 drift fits the 6902 bearing. So when you marry the two together, they fit perfectly tight. And when they're then put onto the bearing press, it holds it perfectly tight and drives it perpendicular into the hub, therefore guaranteeing a perfect press every time. First job, grease our bearings up, run a bit of grease round, prevent corrosion and ease installation. Same rule applies to the hubs, just a little bit. Not too much required. Do both sides of the hub. Right, got our bearing press, our freshly greased bearings, got the bearing on. Insert our preload tube. Bearing press on one side. Bearing on the other. And down we go. And simply drive the bearing in. And it's as simple as that. Done. So what can we take from this? The hammer and screwdriver removal technique. In some cases, as we've proved with the hump wheel, you can't even use this 
In other cases, if you are very careful, you can carefully tap bearings out with this, but it is literally hit and miss. And as for Frankenstein's nose ring, in my personal opinion, and I'm sure many will disagree, I think that is a bad idea. Yes, I'm sure some people have got it to work, but it would be interesting to find out how many people have wrecked perfectly good wheels using this. Could you imagine getting a thousand pound set of wheels and trying to push bearings back in using that? It, it, it's a crazy idea, especially when you consider that tools specific for the job are so easy to obtain at a fraction of the price you would think they would cost. So if you've got a few bikes that you're maintaining, my advice, grab yourself the right tools for this job. <laughs> you won't regret it. Now, and if immaculate bike is your thing, check out that video up there where I do all things ultrasonic clean. It's an interesting video. However, if you want to stick to the bearing theme, then check out that video down there where it's all things headsets. Thanks for watching.